Hey, Internet, welcome back to Same Ish Different Day, the podcast where we continue the march into madness. I'm Raza Malik, and I'm joined with my Amaze Balls co host, Bailey Nargang, also featuring the lovely Wine Mom, the arbiter of everything TikTok and YouTube. Hey, it's Wine Mom. Bailey here. Gotta drop that reminder that you can find this show on any streaming service you use. Remember to leave a sassy review, and you wanna bash us or our opinions generally? Well, you can follow us on Instagram, TikTok, and maybe some other places in the future. I join these guys weekly to keep their egos in check as we break down complex social issues and talk about why your kids shouldn't be watching family vloggers. We talk about real-ish on a real level. Ain't got time for the Twitters? Don't worry, we have collectively wasted our existence combing the internet for you. Also, before these two get carried away, don't be shy. Join our Discord for the inside scoop. You can also support us on Patreon, where you can work your way up your our very own class system. And don't worry, it's pay to win. So welcome back to another episode of Same Shit, Different Day, where we try not to rip each other's heads off. Let's get it. Interwebs, hello. And hello. now we're here. We exist. We exist yes. to entertain you. We have come to the, to the wide webs of the internet. And Raza, I have your video game audio. I have, I have your video game audio. Yeah, how's, how's you mean you good? didn't Thank want you. that? <laughs> it's you didn't want that you wanted that. <laughs> With this game, it was kind of dramatic, but it's when he starts blowing <laughs> up all the rocket launchers and cars and, <laughs> and animals. <laughs> it makes it a little wild, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So, oh, as man. you guys saw, we have a new fangled intro. So, hopefully, if you're watching us live, you caught that and and you can see that you hang out with us afterwards and we appreciate y'all for sticking around until we got technologically savvy. So, yeah. this week, Raza has kept on with the the Halloween themes. And since he's got us in uh, a movie contest where we're debating our favorite Halloween movies, we're trying to figure out the good ingredients to make a spicy Halloween flick right like your classic Wing. blockbuster are you thinking okay so that, I, let's clarify then here raza are we thinking like are we trying to figure out how to make the best halloween blockbuster or are we trying to figure out how to make the best like horror movie horror movie in general oh yeah horror movie like what goes what can you put together that can make a horror movie not <laughs> cliche and not tropey hmm do you have like the example that can come to mind to me is like the paranormal activity uh the shining exorcist you know you, you know those those like revolution those icon those not quote unquote they are actually iconic mo movies so like the, the ingredients that we could use are, are things like the scare factor how many jump scares is too many jump scares mm. uh, d how intelligent does the killer need to be and how dumb do the the survivors need to be and which hot college couple dies first <laughs> oh my more, gosh more, yeah. more <laughs> if, it's a, if it's a good horror movie there are no hot college couples i'm just gonna put that out there yeah that's how you yeah. feel Sometimes. That's all right. All I right. No Captain in the Woods bullshit. Come on. So score shirts or, or no score shirts? That's it. Another, another thing. What? What word you, did you, you say? Scorched Earth. Like Scorched everybody Earth. dies Earth. or like. Or Nobody like, dies? Um, no. Or like yeah. half the cast dies. And we'll, so on that same note, list. I'm not even mm. going to rant too hard. It's all about the tone, right? Like you got to mm -hmm. suspend disbelief. Like, yes, uh, a Rob Zombie, like House of a Thousand Corpses is only creepy because you could like kind of see those being actual insane people doing that shit. Right. Or the Texas Chainsaw yes. Massacre. But then as soon as mm. you make it Chucky, it's a little harder to like stay <laughs> terrified. Of, you know what I mean, yeah, I don't like dull stuff or like, you know, Things that rely on an inanimate object to be the horror, I don't oh, love man. that. So, That's fair. 
That's fair. <laughs> that got me a lot as That's... a kid with the, the, the goosebumps and, and the, yeah. the bump in the night story show. See, the, fuck the only the only movie that I accept that from is Event Horizon, because that's pretty much like the whole basis of the movie, is that the ship is alive. Yes. So, yeah. Yeah. that's the only one I accept, but that's because it's a different format. You're, like, living within a, like, because a ship is an electronic, it's more believable that it could form some sort of intelligence. Yeah. You know? So that's yeah. why it's more believable for me, and more, like, I would accept that <laughs> more so. Yeah, well, like, when movies are like grounded, I I find are a little are a little more believable, especially yeah. horror movie, um, movies. It can get away with a lot a lot more. Like, yeah. like the premise is already situational. You aren't mm. like or like yeah, like things that yeah, like the the situation is is like that it's all believable it's all relatable right like we all have yeah. a fear yeah like the haunted house fear that's the one that can easily right right you know. i just I... Sorry, sorry go no, ahead go 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 go, go. I, well, i'm gonna i was gonna pat your ego because that's mm-hmm. like that's why great horror films like the shining and all the kubrick's shit is like very hard to replicate because it's like that yeah talent of of creating that fear but in a completely believable tone so that you're not yeah. like you don't you're not disassociating from the mm-hmm. media you're interacting with right like you need yeah. to stay engaged for it to stay scary yes you know yes see this may this may sound a little contradictory <laughs> what i'm good say because i feel like back then horror movies worked because they were they were having so many new concepts like the shining had so many new concepts and horror that people just weren't ready for um and it took a lot of people by shock but again that's also because stephen king is amazing at what he writes right um but for me now like when i when i go to watch a new horror movie i feel like my my horror threshold has changed before jump scares would work. Blood would work. Screaming would work, you know, (laughs) even just popular celebrities being in movies would work. But I feel now if I'm watching a horror, I don't want to see an A-list celebrity. I feel like for me, that's the game changer in a horror. If you can have a whole cast of people that I have maybe been in a couple other things that are not super popular, but I feel like that adds more realness to a horror for me. Mm-hmm. It makes it makes it more fun when I'm like, oh, I don't know these actors, so I'm not focusing on the acting of the actor or the character of the actor from previous movies. I'm focusing yeah. on this new experience. Um, and I also think with the way that cinema has changed, silence in horror movies. Like extreme yeah, ear-piercing silence. Mm-hmm. It extremely changes the movie. And that's why I really like Don't Breathe. And I yes. also liked um, the one that it came to Netflix. What's it called, Raza? Bird Box. Uh, <laughs> is it Bird, Bird Box? No. was good, but no, not Bird Box. That's not the one I'm thinking of. Is it? The one uh, with Jim from The Office. Oh, The Quiet. Oh, Quiet Place. A quiet Place, yeah. Mm. See, that place. was that was worked really well because, you know, spoiler alert for anyone who hasn't watched it yet, and I'm sorry that you haven't. It's on Netflix. It's there's, there's no excuse, right? Um, yeah, there's yeah. one part where she's, like, running, and it's very quiet. You can kind of hear, like, feet connecting with the ground, mm-hmm. but then you yeah. hear, like, a sharp sound. And it's not even that the sound scared me. It's just the reality of what that sound means. Because when you take a very arbitrary, normal thing that you don't think would be scary, and then you put it in context and make it scary, I feel like that really sells good yeah. horror, in my yeah. opinion. <laughs> no, no, you, you, you're right. Because like the, I, I saw a movie that I will, we, we will debate about mm. uh, this weekend that uh, does exactly that. Like. It, it it leans heavily on the on the not just the the sound like the sound but mm-hmm. but the atmosphere like yes. when you well, horror movies and there are a lot of horror movies especially in in our day of age that rely 
fully on the jump scare. So like when yeah. you're doing it on that, it gets played out, and like the, then like the audience kind of expects it. Whereas if this type of a movie was smart in the way that like the the it it provided the sense of dread through yeah the scene mm-hmm. the scene and the scene itself was was alive was 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 a character on on its own yeah it didn't have any characters it was zooming in zooming out a low toned uh like a piano playing and, and that's all it, it needed and just yeah. that it gave me goosebumps now if if, if a movie did that and then like went to jump scare to jump scare i would be like okay i get it you're scary jesus yeah move on right uh, so um i think that like the movies the tone needs to be there mm-hmm. meaning the the sound needs to be there the visuals need to match the sound and yeah. like it needs to be like crazy diverse with how with how diff with how it like what how it approaches the, the yeah yeah the, the yeah scale. well that's it that's, needs, that's, to, yeah, I, it needs I, I, to be go <laughs> sorry Bailey no, um today, sorry no it's okay I think um because what I think what you're trying to say Raza when it comes to horror movies is they need to be immersive if you're yes. watching a horror movie and you're like, oh, we're at the courthouse and now we're at this haunted house and now we're at the lawyer's office and now we're in the car and now we're doing this long drive somewhere, it's like, okay, you've lost me already and I feel like there's too many like neutral moments in a movie. I need yeah. to feel like I'm moving through suspense. Even if you want to change scenes like that, fine, but at least make it make sense because I want to be immersed in what the people are feeling. And that's mm-hmm. why like... Um, when I watched um, The Loved Ones, I've told you guys about that one. Yeah, I love that movie because it was all taking place in one environment. But even though the movie is very bright and like there's a lot of color in that movie, and I, from what I remember of it, it was, it was a very yeah. light movie. It wasn't very yeah. dark. It's mm-hmm. still like it still sucked me into the environment and made this like very bright environment horrifying. And I feel like yes. a lot of movies think that in order for an horror, a horror to be good, you have to have like a scary monster under the bed and it has to be super dark and ooey spooky. And it's like, yeah, those movies are great and they work really well. But when mm-hmm. you can bring in aspects that are not of a traditional horror and then make them feel really good, which I think The mm-hmm. Shining does that really well, uh, not to bring it up again, but um, there's large parts of the movie which are in very well lit spaces that still give you like a little bit of goosebumps and if i feel like that's the kind of immersion i'm looking for when i'm watching a horror movie i want to feel whatever the emotion is regardless of the environment so immersion yeah, i think yeah. is the operative immersion, yeah. here between all yeah. of our feelings yeah yeah um yeah, yeah. i was gonna relate it to like jordan peele right that's what he's been doing excellently and why he's fucking swung the door open because the current the modern horror film industry was missing that and all he did was make some more down to earth, relatable but fucked yeah. up situation horror movies mm-hmm. that didn't mm-hmm. have big sets like you're both saying, and it was it was super easy to digest and sucked you in because it was easy to get immersed. Yeah, I'll yeah. admit I've not watched any of his movies yet, mostly because mm-hmm. of the controversial opinions around them, and I'm just not prepared f- to have my opinion yet. But <laughs> I will watch them. <laughs> <laughs> The, I, I didn't. Are, I didn't watch yeah. the reverse one. The the mirror world us? people. Us. Mm. Or whatever. us. That that yeah. one. I I didn't get around to, but I I really want to. It seemed really cool. But yeah. I, I g- g- get out. Like I I did see it, and I like it was good. But I first saw it, I didn't get the hype around it. I was just like, okay, I get. Yeah. I totally get what he he's saying here, and I'm. Yeah. And it's cool how he's portraying. This message, but he's making this message a little more dead because people are going to see a horror movie regardless of, of the things. Or I whatever. think just... a lot of the hype was just the socio, the social timing because it was like a, a black director being given a budget, and then like during that was around all like the, the 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 second social justice push we were having, right? And then it was all of a sudden, oh, look at this black creator and. 
after Black Panther and all that, it was like the revolutionary yeah. film. I think it was very timely. And, and also, which I think I also think credit too, though. Sorry, go. Yeah, no, it's okay. uh, sorry. I, like, you know, like I, I also think it, it's because people were interested of seeing Jordan Peele, who's a comedic person, right? Like all he's done, his his acting catalog is all comedy. Mm-hmm. And then there, were, I I believe there was some sort of intrigue in there to see what because he's doing a drop, he's doing a horror movie also, exactly. yeah, complete yeah. polar opposite than what he is. Or what well, we, you know what, what they does. say: the funniest, happiest people are the darkest ones. So yes, oh yeah, yeah. for real, for real. Yeah, so, that's yeah, very it's true. Not a surprise. I, it's a, yeah. So why isn't but... Kevin Hart coming out? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> oh my gosh, do do not. <laughs> Kevin Hart's about the bag, not about the art, bro. That's why right. Kevin Hart That's is true. just about how many starring or secondary roles can I fit in in a year so that my kids will never have to work. Yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. Well, see, it's actually it's funny you said that because that's that's one thing about horror movies that I think you don't even know what you said, but I'm going to say it now. (laughs) It's like um, artsy horror movies, right? Because a lot of people think, oh, horror is just one concept. It's got to be like gory or loud or dark or scary. Like that's it. But Mm -hmm. I find that horror movies can be just as beautiful, but also still make you feel very scary things. As I've talked about with The Shining, like that's a very beautiful movie, but it does make you feel a lot of things. Um, I also Mm -hmm. think like In the Tall Grass is also a scary, is uh, sorry, uh, a beautiful movie, but it does make you feel things. It's a pretty movie, but it definitely does make you feel certain things. It does, yeah. Watching so it. I'm assuming that's what you watched this weekend, and I'm very happy to hear that. I saw that and saw something else. We're definitely. (laughs) Mm. <laughs> like, see, um, I, I, I do agree with you and that's why it was hard for me to pick movies for our competition yeah. because I found that all the ones I thought were horror films were like ho- thriller horrors because yes. of that I'm more into like mm-hmm. the thrillery aspect rather mm-hmm. than like the stereotypes of oh I need the bloodiest shit I could get I already Just watch scared. anime yeah. like I, I'm, I'm gored to the I already get enough gore Right? Yeah. And the jump scares are the part I hate. So, like, I want you to set the tone and make it creepy. And those are the ones that yeah. I enjoy a lot, a lot more. Yeah. But, it's like the psychological aspect. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Like, those ones are harder to, to do, I find, because you're, it's a. It it isn't the jump scare. It's like the the perfect movie that I didn't put on a goddamn list if I didn't put it. I didn't. I, you can't, I can't do it now. But, like, Hereditary, right? Like, it's. It pl- that movie plays with your head. When a movie does that to an audience, and you know it's yeah. fucking yeah, it was, it's and like it stays this... with you. Yeah, I concur. Like that's one of the one of the premises. I watched this movie called Moon, and it's like stuck in my. Oh, head that's but, such a but, good movie. I've I never even one? heard of that. I you do need to watch it. Okay, so I won't spoil it, but it's like yeah, don't I, spoil I, I accidentally it. mistook it as a horror movie because it fucked with my head. It's like that would be it such kind a of trippy, is a horror. It would be like such a trippy situation to be in. Uh, so it's just the premise and the way it's set up. It's like, and then I Googled it. It's like, oh, this is a different category. It's like, okay, so I think I'm misinterpreting oh. what my premise of horror films were. And I'm right. learning that through this discussion. <laughs> well, there you go. But- yeah, that's another like, like, like standoutish movie as well because I, do, I, I, I wouldn't put that in any one genre because like, yeah, he he gets that fear of what what he realizes right, but then it sort of turns on on its itself where it, it like it becomes like a philosophical yeah um, movie yeah. kind of it becomes right. yeah yeah yeah. Okay, you well, gotta it's... watch that one later than Wine Mom. There's okay, I will. This movie. It's fucked. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, okay. I like fucked up movies, so it it's a fun me. watch. It's really cool. It's really cool. It's small set. Um, what, and it's just what cast member? We had literally one actor. It's a one man mm. movie. Mm, I love those. I love. And it's like this is a, the the thing about movies nowadays that I wish was more popular is like small casts and just like doing that really well. No, you know? what about Matt Damon on Mars growing potatoes? 
Obviously, I love Matt Damon, but that's not where we are, okay? I'm talking about it, it, what I would like to see. To Marcia now. Oh my gosh. The Marsha cast. Oh, man. <laughs> Too much. No, but, yeah, like, like I do appreciate when, because, like, claustrophobia is a very, like, it's, like, that theme is in a lot of horror movies. It's actually in most horror movies. Not even in the just, in the sense of just, like, the like narrative aspect, but also in, like... Okay, hold on. This movie you guys are talking about, there's, it It revolves around claustrophobia, is that what you're saying? A little bit. Uh, can, actually, a little that, bit. That yeah. doesn't spoil it. He's, 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 it's it one, doesn't. he's alone on the moon. Yeah. Oh. It's the ending. It like it's 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 it 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 the ending. All the space it, in the world, but claustrophobic. I like it. Yeah. And it's 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 it's, it's deeper than claustrophobia. Oh. Too. A little bit than that, but like I do like like movies when they make it intimate, and when it gets intimate, you get this sense of like the fear is even closer to you. Like the Blair Witch Project mm-hmm. does it that way, and like. When it's pers- when it starts hitting you that that way, then you're like, "Holy fuck! I need to step out because yeah. that's what ha- happens to me." A vibe, I get a it. Vibe. A real vibe. I'm gonna take that load point and and mm-hmm. transition. We're gonna go to the next phase. So Raza, stop shooting people in the face. <laughs> let's, let's, let's pull up our movie competition, guys. Look at our, movie comp. So look at our family friendly content. We've just got Far Cry 6 in the background. Roz is just fighting revolutions while we argue about horror films. I'm a CIA op- operative in, in that movie. <laughs> <laughs> Let's find out. Oh, so man. last week we did the uh, yeah. okay. So last week we got The Shining, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I, I it was a close one, guys. It was a very close one. I, I thought you both argued great points. Shining. Let's be real here. We're with friends. Is is low key overrated. Um, so we kind of had to give it. It's it's point there so we're and then this week we're doing two movies that are, are actually kind of the same tone. Mm-hmm. uh it's the witch and the tall grass oh yeah. i knew that's one you were gonna put okay this up. is good okay. i get presented to today i like this i'm down with it. yeah <laughs> so so uh do you want to go first one? um I guess I can. Okay, so I I I really like the tall grass. I did not love the witch. Oh my god! So I'm sorry. We're all opposite sides here. I'm sorry. I know, <laughs> but like, because I can say like I didn't love it so much that I barely remember what happened in the witch. Um, yeah. Tall grass. I did watch it a long time ago, so part like a little challenging for me to remember. Uh-huh. Um, but I feel like. The aspect of, like, being trapped in a field of tall grass Mm -hmm. is so horrifying because it's something that your parents warn you about as a kid. Like, I don't know if you ever have experienced this, but as somebody who used to go cottaging and, like, up north and stuff like that, your parents would always say, don't go into something that you can't see your way back out because it's scary. Um, but a lot of aspects of it, like it, it really, that movie is like a, it just messes with your mind because yeah. you, you spend a lot of time thinking, because the thing with horror movies is whether you think you're going to predict or not, you're going to predict how you think the movie is going to go. And I found for myself, like watching tall grass, I kept thinking, Oh, this is what's going to happen. This is going to happen. And then it was like, LOL, you thought here's this thing that you weren't prepared for. Yeah. Um, I disagree, but go. <laughs> no, I, I, I think so. Um, oh, I'm trying to remember it because it's been so long. But I think, like, even just the aesthetic, like, the, it was so pretty to watch. Um, and it's it's one of those like as I was saying, like it's all done in one area, and it's okay. all the same. Like the scenes do not change at all. It's all the same background scenes that you're constantly seeing. Yes. Yeah. Um, and I feel like that adds an like an elevated level to the horror because 
when you're watching it, you're expecting like a new environment or some sort of change, which will then bring you to like, I guess, relief in the movie. But that doesn't happen. It's like a constant like on edge ambush of like bits and pieces of horror that you don't expect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why it's such a good movie. <laughs> so we will stay on, on the, the tall grass for for a minute um because i saw it too i was interested in seeing it i thought because the trailer and what my mom said kind of blew me away i was like oh this is an interesting the premise is cool however the execution was a bit flawed uh the, 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 yeah, the, I'll the, give you that. the 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 hor good horror movie doesn't really give itself up uh, mm -hmm. at all a little way through the halfway point of, of this movie, the revelation is um, revealed. You don't, and then at the by that point, I'm just like, say, okay, what yeah, is going order, like? Order in the court. Order in the mm. court. Mm. Raza, you are supposed to be presenting your case, not critiquing the defendants. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, but I think I think it's fair though. It's fair. No, I, mean, I think you're fair though, Raza, in your opinion, because I was gonna say earlier when we were talking um, previously, mm. is that no, I didn't feel this way with Tall Grass, and I respect that you felt that way. But there's a lot of times when I'll watch a horror, and I'm like, okay, mm. this concept is literally so good. Yes. Why did you fuck it up? Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It, and yeah. like, I can respect that maybe for you that movie fell a little short. But again, like I said, I haven't watched it in a long time. I just mm. remember really liking it, and that's why I was like, "Let me slap it up here." Like it starts off all well, the whole premise when you go into the tall grass. Mm -hmm. I that was I'm like, "Huh, oh, this is gonna get." I like this. I like the where's it going? But I was actually physically laughing when I was just like, "Okay, obviously the these two white people are gonna go balls deep into a yeah. all grass. Where they Let's literally charge. were told not to. They're told not to and they charge right into yeah. the tall grass. I did like the fact that the the church on the opposite side of the road had all the cars from all the time yes. periods there. Yes. But when the movie kind of explained itself, it could be it became kind of predictable. It was and mm. it, like I was like, okay, the dad all right, I get it. He touched that thing, and he's like going all loosey yeah. goosey. Where have I seen this before? Oh, Insidious Part Three, same actor too. <laughs> um, but it's it's like the premise. What Wyman says, like of that of being in a in, in like just uh, in an area where uh, you you don't know what's going on. Right. Where it's just that thing that actually. Uh, was the the worrisome part? Um, the, the part the part that I got started to get scared at, scared was when they were running in the tall grass. Literally, I was just like, "Stop moving!" and start to stop stop fucking moving. Um, but yeah, it was it was uh, it was it it had good intentions, but I just think it it wasn't. Um, it just became it became a. A victim of itself, where it was yeah. scary, and it was like, oh, by the way, here's a diner, and now we're gonna break the, we're, we're gonna show you what the grass actually does, and it was like, okay, now I'm not scared anymore. So at it that point, it pulled an M M Night Shyamalan because it like tried too hard to make itself suspenseful. No, M Night Shyamalan is this own. Fucking, <laughs> he oh, screws gosh. up on his own. This movie actually, there were a lot more moments of where it was being smart, but okay. there was a decent amount of moments where it was like, okay, that's fucking, I could call, I call that. But okay, so now on my turn. Yes. Yeah, All right. Noted. So noted. the witch I saw. Yeah. Thank you. The witch I saw after my <laughs> cousin recommended it to me. It's fucked up um i had to do some digging after i watched it i realized that oh the, the, there is some truth to it because how it begins is this family gets excommunicated because the dad does so, something and it's set in the 1800s in new england so the 
the fear of because what's scarier than a time outside of our time, right? Where it's, they don't have the same technology as we do, and they still believe in certain superstitious stuff. Um, a, a, a lot of shit happens in the movie. Um, it's set on a ranch. Mm-hmm. Uh, far, there's a forested area, and this, I actually had to pull that out this word because I forgot it. The movie uses a good, uh, you, you is a good example of scenography where it, it it uses the scene to make the fear because you rarely see the the, the witch, uh, and when you right. see the witch, it's it's this old lady who's butt naked. So I saw an old lady butt twice. Oh my god, I'm scarred from that um <laughs> but uh it was so it was um like the zooming in and out when i was zooming in on the forest playing the music i was fucking scared about that mm-hmm. uh what happens in the forest uh too because um the movie gets very unpredictable even at the very end uh halfway you don't know if which child because there's or children, which child is a uh, possessed, and then oh. one child, uh, uh, one there's there were five kids. The one baby gets kidnapped by the witch at the very beginning. Spoiler alert! And it shows <laughs> her like basically mutilating it and like oh. sacrifice, like because witches did that, and uh, and uh, it it it's um. And then the movie the movie starts to unfold after that the family starts to turn on one and and another the eldest daughter which is the main character they think she is becoming a witch and they have a black goat and they forced her to to be in the shed with the black goat because if the devil is there it'll take her because she's a witch um, but then the ending the black goat kills her dad she kills her mom because the mom gets like crazy and stuff and then she becomes the ending is ominous because she walks into the forest all this fucking mu- music is playing and then i think she becomes a witch that's what i, I mean know. it kind of uh, sounds like that's where the movie was going i uh, yeah but like yeah i do yeah and like because the entire time she's blaming her two little little uh siblings like they were talking to the goat they were conversing with the devil and stuff mm-hmm. and then the witch comes and the second time she, you see her sucking from the goat's nipple Gross. and then she kidnaps and the two kids you don't find out what happened to her the two little, little, little see little i think you like that movie because of the aggressive titties no the uh, sorry the symbolism that's why. Yeah. Yeah, um, I I guess. Yeah. yeah. It's which it's, like I can respect yeah. that, yeah. but if it just yeah I can I let's just leave. It, I respect that. <laughs> it's it, like the thing I liked about this. There's only one jump scare, one two mm. jump jump scares, and the rest of it relied on the scene making it scary. Which actually, when you're in 1800, alone in a, like a somewhat of an uneven land. Uh, there's like, and you still believe heavily in Christ, like you still, Christianity is a very prom. I think they're Mormons, but they're heavy Christian uh, mindset. There, they pray, they do everything, um, mm. and there's a rabbit that follows them around, and the goat comes alive. By the way, the goat actually, there's a the the goat becomes a person, and the person leads her into the forest. And to do more sacrifices. That was so well, then. That came out of nowhere. Yeah, it's like, yeah. See, yeah, I don't really stuff. remember. I don't really remember it. But I, I, I can respect the symbolism being like fun about it. Mm-hmm. I, I, I get it. Yeah, it's 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 like a like the shine and uh, not the shining. Like the shining. <laughs> Sorry, no. The the tall grass. I meant the mm. tall grass. Oh, one of the, okay, yeah. It uh, it 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 had its very. It was very intimate, small location, small yeah. set, mm-hmm. like the tall grass, like four actors, four, five, or six actors, right, right, and just, just a bunch of extras, and 
it like yeah it was like it was see crazy. i feel okay so if i'm arguing for my movie yeah mm-hmm. i feel like my movie took a more challenging concept and like did the best that they could with it yeah. whereas your movie took aggressive symbolism and a concept that has been done many a times in horror yeah. because there are there are tons of witch and possession type of movies mm-hmm. and then just made like an okay movie My with a little bit of a jump scare the judge oh, yeah. has has been presented some reasonable doubt but <laughs> but you have to be fair it's not based on concept and it, it should be based on execution but yeah. i will say can i say the tall yes. grass the brother in in that movie there was low-key ancestral stuff going on. That brother was weird. Um, <laughs> There's something like that in every scary-ish movie. He, he was he he loved his sister, mm-hmm. but he really loved her to the point where he killed her husband. Um, spoiler alert! And he's like, "Oh, I'm trying to protect you. I love you." Whatever her name is, I was like, "Oh my god, you this is fucking weird." <laughs> 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 now I'm scared and stuff. Oh, so gosh. it's got, but yeah, it's you know, it had like that, and like I like when Patrick Wilson crushes his wife's head <laughs> just randomly. Oh but, god, like, he gets possessed. And he crushes his, his wife's head. It like the tall grass had like the same sort of possession thing going on with um, what's that movie called? was another it was like insidious kind of because like again patrick will patrick wilson loves being possessed <laughs> in every yeah. movie he wants to be p- 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 possessed he's like put me in any sc- oh, the scary movie i'm being p- possessed fucking sign me up i'll do it for- well it's for called break. perfecting the craft mm-hmm. I mean, okay the most okay looking person i don't think he can't perfect <laughs> or being typecast, you know. It's either oh, that or he got typecast. But he's, what he's if he can't awful, get any other he's roles? Not what if he's pigeonholed? What if you just minimized his whole career? This man's trying to branch out. They're like, no, bitch. <laughs> You're possessed again himself. this time he's around. Literally, yeah. He's a dream, so he put he put himself in in the Conjuring universe. He's in all. But the you know, movies. but you know what <laughs> he. The, oh, yeah. <laughs> He was good in this movie. He, yeah, he was. It's I. I, I made the, the joke to my my friend when Patrick Wilson is the biggest actor in. You know, it's gonna be an okay movie, <laughs> and uh, I was right. You're a bully. <laughs> I'm sorry. So mean. So the issue I'm having as the judge here, it oh, sounds like the distinct competition is that in the tall grass successfully sets up. Like the immersion, and it's a much more relatable story, which is very critical. Mm -hmm. And it seems like the witch was like a little prettier and used an alternative way to spook you, Mm -hmm. but could have could have had some better story beats. Mm Hmm. Sure. Yeah. I feel like I've summarized the key points here. Yes. And Raz's feelings are just hurt. That's okay. I, <laughs> I don't. I don't know what you mean by story beats. I don't know what you mean. By... So Raza, as the creator of this competition, may you mm-hmm. may you reiterate what is what are the factors I am judging the success on? Am I is it a personal opinion or am I going on spook factor or am I going on on the oh, visionariness of I for- it? I literally f- I forgot how I judged The Shining. Um. Uh, uh, I think you should go based on like uh, the the concepts or like like a mix of I concepts. F- that- I feel like yeah. Bailey should just pick what feels good. Then I'm yeah. going. I, I, think, gotta- I think you should just whatever one is you feeling for you, whatever gotta- criteria you think it is. Then I gotta go with the in the tall grass as the winner. <laughs> as the winner. Oh, How do I, I do it? How do I pull it every time? Raza, you you messed up by leading a discussion prior about immersion, right? So I'm a little (laughs) biased going into this. And as as the story was presented, I really, you sold me well. I want to go watch (laughs) The Witch now. 
But yeah. I think In the Tall Grass sounds like it's still a good spooky movie and a relatable mm-hmm. premise, but like a whole buttload more people would be drawn to like go watch that movie versus the artsy. <laughs> can, I, can I argue some? Oh some? my gosh. Hey, hold on. Before you argue something, mm-hmm. I just quickly Googled up. I Googled in the tall grass. <laughs> Googled mm-hmm. up. Um, okay. It's very on brand for me because it is also based off a Stephen King novel. So <laughs> yes. Also, the the witch is based off a truish story, but mm. they into into the uh, into because people did uh, 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 what's the word practice witchcraft. Witchcraft, yeah. Well, All right, Raza, what what straw are you grasping at? Uh, no, Bailey. Uh, so the movie cost. Oh gosh, four million to make, right? Yeah. Guess how much money it made back. Ten. Forty. A hundred. Forty mil. Yes, forty yeah. mil. Yeah. Aha! Look at me, right? I was... I just had a moment where I just realized that people make movies and they invest in them like it's like with a house. When you invest in a house and then hope to profit up, I just realize that now with movies, and that stresses yep. me out. Yeah, it's all, it's all yeah. about <laughs> and but now it's all about the IP because it can live forever on a streaming service. Mm-hmm. Th- this isn't on a stream- streaming service. Oh yeah, it is on on Netflix. Hmm. All right, Bailey, who's a winner? Who who is who's a winner? I just is the definitive tall, winner. Tall definitive winner based on the criteria was in the tall grass. Oh shit. But I, right. was, I was, I was, I was a biased judge based on the immersion. No, I, I don't think you were biased. I think it's it's accurate. Bailey, if, <laughs> if you watched the movie, you'd be almost like, "The fuck is like, n- none of this makes sense." No, none I like, I like sense. how you describe the idea that they use this scene to build the horror, and I really want to see that. That sounds cool. Yeah, but then you should have given the witch. You fucking. But we're trying to we choose the best you. horror movie. We call the judge. We call this movie. judge. We should recall this judge. I want right. to do a vote and recall this judge. Listen, if it makes you <laughs> feel any better, I know somebody who would agree with you. So. And then I but saw I'm your. Mm-hmm. I, I saw your a, a rating on on the on Letterbox. The lonely two, the lonely two star there, is, <laughs> and amongst the. Fo- Five stars. <laughs> like, so she's, well, clearly, somebody's wrong here. Oh gosh. Anyways, guys. So I'm. I. So don't worry. Next week, it's gonna be. I'm definitely gonna win uh-huh. this one. <laughs> oh <laughs> really? Punch out. Okay. So. Keep bull. Is keep keep uh, joking about as I switch the screens, and then we'll go on to the. We're doing other things. Reddit. Oh, Reddit I, after. Right, okay, so I'm gonna switch my my sex yep. box stuff. Yeah, well, I'm sorry. My <laughs> sex <laughs> box stuff. Did I stutter? Did you Did say hit? sex box stuff? Sex box. Yeah, that's sex. what they tell him to call it at his day job as a, a game writer. <laughs> <laughs> it's all a bunch of dudes. <laughs> And yes, uh, one guy has to have a, a harassment training. Hmm. Mm. Specifically, just you. Oh uh, no, because I don't know what, what's harassment. <laughs> okay, oh, man. so we got the Reddit, and Raza was a kind-hearted individual, and actually copy and pasted it into the document for me, and I Ooh. love you. For that. So uh, this one. You, oops. What? Do you have anything on stream? Because I by accident closed my. Uh, I've got my, just a. Uh, it's oh, his no. visage. I've got a visage. Vis- visage. All right. Cool. Uh, um, <laughs> yeah. So, we've got an advice ca- column this time from Reddit rather than "Am I the asshole?" All right. Mm. So the title is, "Dating older woman, aged twenty to thirty-five, as an eighteen-year-old male." Uh oh. Okay. So. Hi, I'm 18 years old, and I've always had a connection to older people. In brackets, above my age, like students, brackets, I I presume to clarify that not super old people. This is starting to fade into general interest in a relationship. 
that was a big jump. So this is starting to fade into my general interest in relationships. So finding old people. I find older women in, holy crap, this is hard to read. I find older women in mentioned age attractive for many reasons, but I don't really know how to engage with this problem. Okay. One mom, take the floor. Because <clears throat> you clearly have something to say. Uh, no, I'm just a little confused. He is, what, 18? Yes. Yeah. And he likes, what, 30 year olds? Roughly, yeah, 20 to 35 as an 18 year old. Okay, continue reading. I just need to clarify that that that's was what... the big no. premise. And it. then now we're getting into he's got a bunch of questions. So I'll give okay. you the first easiest one is Have you had an. an have you had a relationship with an older woman as a man or i guess uh, let's flip it for a wine mom you know no no keep me out of it go ahead boys oh um yes what? but not <laughs> creepy older like that just different but what styles. what is the bracket oh uh, like five years couple of years yeah five plus five plus but i never went creepy older i had some people give me the opportunity and i was just like nah i don't mm. think i'm in there i'm okay with i've you, only I'm not there well like well, see, what am the i gonna do why... take it back to my fucking shitty smelly basement apartment <laughs> i i just admit, <laughs> I, 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 i'm gonna <laughs> <laughs> that is you're funny. Um, the reason why I bowed out, Raza, is because I've only dated a guy younger than me once, and it was only oh, by right. a grade because we were in high school. <laughs> so okay. exactly, yeah. I I usually prefer to be the smaller person. So. Oh, mm -hmm. you mean the younger per person? Yes. Not short, right? Just young. I mean, by default, I'm shorter than everyone, but yes. <laughs> no, but I'm just saying, mm -hmm. I, I just feel as a woman, I, you know, no offense to anybody, but when you're dating, you look for older because it's just more mature mm -hmm. because I've, I've just, yeah. So trick question, not really trick. I'm, okay. I'm mentally at, like, immature yeah right um so <laughs> i i don't know why you guys just agreed on that i mean <laughs> you're Very you're quickly. trying to tell a point right now i i, I want the point that's why i agree um, give me the point so i i'm mentally immature so uh -huh. when girls start to talk to me i'm starting to realize that they do want a dude that's older significantly older and then yes. a twenty, a twenty, a twenty-nine year old man, boy, in my case, um, boy. yeah, because I'm, I ain't, I ain't no, I can't chop down lumber yet. I gotta graduate that. Um, <laughs> uh, I, as a twenty-nine year old boy, I'm starting to see that girls, uh, sorry, women in my age group, even twenty-eight, um, mm. are going for dudes that are like. A couple of years or like at least five years or senior. Five plus. Five plus. Yeah. Five plus. And okay. Well, thank you for You're welcome. Thank you. Um so five plus seems to be the the thing for mm -hmm. women to to like to go after dudes in that sense. Right. But the other way around, I'm not sure. But the personal. <laughs> we know, we know which the other way. Men go as young as they can. As young is socially acceptable. No, I don't. I, I honestly don't. And like, okay, maybe and... Bailey. Maybe you well, don't. You Bailey. You you. But you're Mr. Perfect. All right. There is a group. Perfect. There is a group of men. That I, some friends that I have oh, that I've had to argue. I've had to argue like, what do you as a thirty-year-old have in common with like? You know, a legal age woman. woman, like right. Um, yeah. Like what? What do you two have in common? Yeah, that's the shit. Once, that's that's yeah. that's why I can't go younger. Like even as it's it's not in the prude way. It's just I can't deal with like the university college age human. Yeah. And it's just like oh my seminar is so difficult, and my roommate and my but my parents are paying for all of my food, and now that's like I but don't. But see, wanna, that's like, you. That's you, but there's a lot of guys that are like, but she's hot and she's younger. 
exactly exactly but she's I guess gonna I'm live longer on... than me or whatever they think i don't know that's why i like the older woman though because then i'm having a genuine conversation and we're engaging about shit rather than just like oh what club should we go to see but I also i also i don't want to be i don't want to be unfair to younger women and say that they're all immature same but same thing with men like i don't want to assume that they're all immature either no you can say that with a whole heart there let's let's be let's be i just think this guy because we've derailed from what we were talking about i think that this guy is just a little bit more emotionally mature, and that's why he's more attracted to older people or he's looking for stability that he doesn't have in his life currently and he's looking for that from an older woman what is the next question <laughs> so next um, question how have you met Slash, what are the best places to meet older people? Online dating. That's your only option, pal. Or a, or a coffee shop. A coffee shop or a library. like those. Places. I met our English teacher. Okay. I was going to say. Oh, oh, huh? I think Bailey... Uh, Be careful what you say. Be careful yeah, what you say. English prof? Yeah. Okay, I met her in downtown a couple of year, years back, and I just bought her a drink. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, that's fine. Okay. Okay, okay what's fine. the next question? All right. Um, no, no, that, but seriously, that become scandalous. a bartender. <laughs> work in a restaurant, and then you'll meet older people. I was like 20 w at being a waiter, and then all of a sudden I've got server friends that are all older, and I'm serving mm -hmm. older humans. Billy's got a lot of granny girlfriends is what he's saying. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any tips for engaging in a relationship with an older human? Uh, make sure that you are actually emotionally mature. And, and like, make sure there's no ex husband there, that there's no kids. Well, in no, 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 <laughs> this is the, no, but this is okay. But seriously, though, as like a young guy looking at an older woman, you have to realize that women in general are usually more long term oh, minded, yes, right? right? Like, yeah. we're usually like, we know what we want out of the relationship that we are engaging in. So, if you are going to engage, in a relationship with adult people, then expect for it to be adult things. Not just, ooh, experienced older woman, but also older women who may want children and marriage and moving in together. Understand that that comes with somebody who is in an older stage in their lives. And don't fuck around, okay? So, yeah. what I have for B B Brooklyn Nine-Nine is when mm -hmm. you're dating an older woman, their interests usually are sophisticated, so start watching a lot more CPAC. Um, oh my gosh! Watch the news and stuff. Let's start being, you know, start being, start being deep, um, and start like reading like The Economist, um, 1984. You know, do things. Okay, so like, yeah, can I come in it. with the good advice? I'm coming in with the good yeah. advice because Ross is dead. Right. Um, to combine both of your both of your points is just like yeah, know your shit if you want to date an older person. You know, like you ain't gotta be the most emotionally intelligent, but like if she's got kids, like you gotta be aware. Like uh, I, she's considering if I'm an influence on them, so I can't barge into their house all the time just because I'm a kid and I think I'm gonna get laid. Like right. you know, you gotta be aware of your situation. They'll respect that you're younger, but you gotta be aware of like how you're impacting their life, and then you're bingo bango. Um, well, just understand that the dynamic is not going to be what you think it is. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be like a very, uh, she, she's, because I assume, okay, uh, women, the older the, they get, the more, like, respect becomes more, more and more and more. Not to say, like, you don't want that, but, like, respect mm -hmm. for, for older women becomes more of a forefront thing and it's mm -hmm. more complicated in that in that sense usually these older no that's no no yeah you're but, walking um, a tightrope buddy you're walking a tightrope no no because <laughs> I'm, I'm going from, from personal experience but um uh uh but uh it's just like the old like women uh 
do want a commitment as what blind mom, mom yeah mom said. that stuff becomes a lot more serious to to them where they're like okay i have a if, if they have a career going that becomes serious yeah and you have to be compatible with that because you are coming in, in into the relationship as yeah. a 18 year old or well it's like i'll yeah. tell you even at the age that i'm at which is 29 almost um yeah it's fine i don't care but being at the age that i'm at now and like the dating pool that i'm looking at is my age plus like even some of the older guys it's just i don't know what they're where their heads are you know what i mean yeah. and it's like if you're not prepared to be in the same zone as a woman especially for me like because okay if you're dating a single older woman nine times out of ten she is probably very independent she yes. has her own place. Yeah. She has her own car. She has a job. She has money. She doesn't have mm -hmm. time for you. Like, you know, she has her friends and things that she's doing and she's implementing you into your life, into her life. It's not mm -hmm. to be your babysitter. So mm -hmm. either you're going to meet her where she is or just like, don't just don't like you have to make sure that you are fully aware of what you're getting into. And I'm saying this not as like, oh, well, like, you never know how people can connect and age doesn't really matter mm -hmm. that much and they're both adults. It's like, okay, that's all fine and cute to think, but you also have to be realistic that mm -hmm. an age gap matters because yeah. the way that society puts pressure on women, mm -hmm. like, you're going to you're gonna engage in those pressures when you are a young person with an older woman and if you're not prepared for those older people pressures, mm -hmm. stay out of it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's on, on it's two note. different worlds too. Yeah, it's two yeah. Different, different worlds. Yeah. yeah. On your note, on your note, mm -hmm. you best be do some soul searching mm -hmm. and make sure you're not looking for a fucking mommy, right? Yeah. So many of these men out here don't even know that they're looking for a mommy, right? Can you, can you say mom? This makes you. He said mommy. No, so, it's a mommy, mommy because they want someone to coddle their emotions. Because they're so tough in society and the the, the inselliness of the internet, they they don't realize that what they're seeking for in these older women is is emotional uh, warmth because they don't know how to communicate or connect, so they want to throw that on to the older woman mm -hmm. because they think they can do it for them. Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a very 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 important thing that you just said there. Your partner is your partner, not your parent. And that's, that's regardless of gender and age, whatever it is, like, just be aware that they're not there to babysit you. Like, mm -hmm. you're to be engaging in a mutual experience. Please. Please. Uh, yeah, yeah please. It's, it's, yeah, like, because, like, like, guys also mature slow, slowly and, and, and mm -hmm. a lot later. And then they develop these issues. Uh, I don't know if... If I have personally, I don't know, but I do know for a fact that, that there are I've seen guys get into relationships and they're like completely, uh, they they just replace their own mother with mm -hmm. somebody else, and it becomes yes. a weird like d d dynamic, yes. where like the woman sort of ha has to do a double role now, which yeah. is yes. weird. Yeah, so, and unfair. Uh, and unfair, yeah. It it and it, it 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 and it doesn't really happen to older men with younger women because the younger no, no. You're uh, right. What you're saying. Oh no, okay. No, because like I, because uh, I I think that again, women mature quicker, right? Because when they're looking for an older dude. They know what they want, exactly what they want, right? And it's it, it's usually a guy to be compatible with them, and, and I assume older older men are, are easier in the, in that sense. But right. um, yeah, but for the opposite, it's just like a woman, ha old, the older woman has to be very um, like there's more pressure onto her to like yeah. do the two things. Well, get equipped to. to, to to do, to do yeah well to put it in the most like basic terms is that when a woman 
is 30, she's viewed as 40. When a man is 40, he's viewed as 20. That's what it is. Because whenever I've experienced, like whenever I talk about, you know, in the future wanting children, the response is always, well, you better do it soon. Mm -hmm. But I know men who are like 35 and their family, like, you've got all the time in the world. And it's like, okay, okay. Yeah, it's just, it's just sure. pressures too. Right. Like, so that's another thing you have to consider when you're engaging in an age gap type relationship because that's what it is. Mm -hmm. And then the, the pressure also plays on to the woman too. She could be, because the, the younger guy isn't going to be as, as, uh, as messed up because he, yeah. the whole thing is lighter on him this is a relationship for him but for the older woman it's something else like she's looking for somebody for yeah. a long term uh a term thing. Well, so, that's that's yeah. exactly it if at 18 years old you're not looking for the end don't bother a 35 year old woman okay yeah. because when you're 18 you still have college you still have your first job maybe like you don't even have a car yet you probably still live at home not to judge anyone if that's what you live like that's great but you know like i was still at home with my mom at that age so it's like you, you gotta wait until you're sure that you can engage in adult things like it's fine to be like i'm 18 i can drink and be an adult but it's a different form of adult engagement with a 35 year old woman it's the adult <laughs> where you where taxes actually mean something mean something yeah yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> so that's what yeah. i i mean i i was reading this and i thought we we're gonna joke about this but this turned very deep very fast i mean like <laughs> i don't you brought up a dating question thing and you think we weren't gonna go off do you not know right. us <laughs> I mean, I was going to give you all the benefit of the doubt, but like maybe they were going to still uh, have some back and forth there, but no, they're going to, they're going to, I was like, you know what, I was like just recording now, I was like, they're mm -hmm. definitely not doing what I expected. <laughs> well, because I mean, I get what I, I like, I get what you're saying, but I think this is also like, this is, this is, this is big when you're 18. This is very big. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's very big because I think about like at my age, I think about dating an eighteen-year-old. No, no, yeah. because you're no, you no, you've just finished high school. Like, no, you don't want to like live together and like you know share grocery bills. Do you even know what it costs to buy groceries? Yeah. I don't yeah. think you do. But like, and then you. I Find the the odd dude, uh, the odd guy out that's or odd eighteen year old. Yeah. That's like who sort of had like because the experiences mean a lot at that point. You're still developing, but then an eighteen year old who's like, you know, had some interest or like not interesting, but I had a different route than a lot of other eighteen year olds. Uh, yeah, I assume that one, that eighteen year old would mature a lot quicker. And yeah. Then, the, the the thirty year old would seem a, a lot more realistic to him because if he he sees that woman and be like oh she's I don't know everything. that's where um, I think that's can I can I get in here and be all well yes right sure that's right. where I think that's where wine mom's more correct like I think that's the societal pressure bro I don't think it's just, I think it's because the woman's pressured to be more mature at that age right. Mm -hmm. like oh, no, not, I'm saying no. That societal no. expectations are placed on that woman to be more subservient to the 30 year old man because she should be grateful because he's giving her life, right? Bullshit. Yeah. Like no, that. I'm, not I'm saying talking. That you believe uh, that though? I'm not saying that you no, believe that I'm, though. But that's not what I'm. I'm. I'm saying. I'm. I'm saying the the like the 18 year old is is, is going to go through more experiences that makes him grow up a lot quicker. Right. Yeah. And then he sees this uh, this uh, older woman, but for him, it, it, it it's a compatibility issue. For her, it's a a societal yeah issue. So yeah, it's yeah. two different things. Yeah. For both okay. Of, touche. Uh, uh, yeah. Touche. Anyway, the point touche. the point here is. Make sure you are fully aware of what yeah. you're going into before you mess around with a woman who 
has goals and plans and she's well, moving in a fast trajectory okay thanks like my rule okay. of life is know your limits and, party and play within, within it. it that's it that's it <laughs> that's it bro i break it all all the time but you you should you should you should you shouldn't uh yeah but yeah it's just like yeah it's a, if it's a very interesting thing it's yeah j just to see the how the two the two types of people interact with one mm -hmm. in, in another uh even like what what can yeah it's just like what experiences can they share at the end of the day That's exactly one thing one thing from what i've gathered yes yes okay all right and with that Thank you, internets. Thank you. Thank you. This is the, the beautiful mind of Bailey, Raza, and Wine Mom. Uh, spiraling disaster towards the end, but we're still going to give you great tidbits of knowledge because we yes. love you. Because we yes. love you. Thank you again for watching us badly talk about these, these topics. You can follow us on Twitch, Marching Into Madness, all one word, no space. On the gram, marching underscore into underscore madness and on patreon at patreon.com slash marching into madness and again on la discord a at marching into madness join us and bailey will pay you 10 whole canadian dollars <laughs> you can follow whitey over <laughs> at Bali <laughs> underscore me media on the Insta. You must definitely follow the life of our of our whole podcast, Wine Mom at X Wine Mom X because the year's two thousand and two, and we still have have the X in our names. And me, your favorite uh, brown boy at underscore r dot r Malik on underscore. Thank you for the third time. We love you. Drink some milk and be healthy. Remember, kids, say no to school and yes to <laughs> <laughs> It's like such bad advice. It's like here we put this well-formulated podcast together with good insight on facts and truth and political points and social <laughs> issues. Don't go to school, dude. <laughs> oh, God. Ba Bailey Mother listens to me. shouldn't be in school after saying that. <laughs> like, ba 